Right, good morning everybody um, and welcome to um, this morning's um, session um, on um, requirements for prediction engines. Um, this um, is a session that um, Artig is running um, in conjunction with the Department of Transport um, following the work they've been doing um, over the last um, couple of years on the Bus Open Data Programme, which I'm sure you're um, familiar with. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. There we go. Um, so um, we're going to this morning um, do a few introductions, um, look at, uh, talk about some of the background behind um this session and then we're going to get um very quickly um interactive because actually this is all about what your thoughts are um so we're going to want to look at what you think the requirements might be for prediction engine things like functionality and quality and and formats um what support you would need if there was a um national um prediction engine um and then look at uh at where we go from here so um we've got quite 30 people online at the moment um so i think what we're going to do um is we will um do this um, online in the um, meal tool. So um, you will have received in the last couple of Eventbrite emails, the ones that warn you that uh, this is about to, to start, um, a link to um, an online tool um, that those of you that have been involved in Artig and Naptan, um, and other similar events will have used um, over the last uh, year or so called Mural. Um, if you um, follow that link, I've also put it in the chat a minute or two ago, um, we can start to get used to um, using it and um, so if you um, join, if you um, are using Internet Explorer, um, then you might have some problems getting on because um, it works on some machines and not others um, because Mural have removed support for it now that it's um, uh, no longer a supported browser by uh, Microsoft. Um, so if you're having problems using Internet Explorer, try using uh, Chrome or Firefox or um, Edge, something like that. So um, what we are going to do is um, we are going to go and um, put up um, some post-it notes with some of our, um, our name and things like that on it. Um, when you are on um, Mural, um, what I'll do is I will go down here. If you've not used it before, um, once you're on, um, you will have um, towards the top left-hand corner um, a um, little um, set of icons. Um, the one um, you will want if it's um, is the um, little um, square um, up here. I've got some more icons than uh, than you as the administrator. Um, if you click on um, that little square with the folded over corner, you'll get some sticky notes. Um, 
popping out and then you can um, just by um, clicking on um, the colour that you want, um, a sticky note will appear and you can start to type in that. Um, if you don't like it, if you uh, highlight it, you can delete it. Um, so we're going to do um, introductions now. Um, so um, I see that uh, some of you um, have already um, gone. When you're on, you can have um, uh, outline of all the different sections that we're going to go through today. If you go onto the introductions, I will uh, summon you all. So you will hopefully all be in the right place. So who are you? Um, so I'm Tim Rivett, um, your organisation. Uh, I work for uh, Artig um, and I'm facilitating this morning. And um, just to uh, understand them um, a little bit more and get you used to things, um, what's your favourite bus route? So we've got people from Nottinghamshire, Transport for West Midlands, Ticketer, R2P, SIPT. Um, if you're called City uh, anymore, um, Omnibus, excellent. A good range of people, Wiltshire. Definitely the Imber bus, yes. Very special uh, uh, service, that. Okay, so now we've um, done a few uh, introductions. Um, if you're still um, doing that, feel free to uh, to carry on. The um, we go back to um if i go back to the agenda um so um the background to this session um is um as you know um bus open data program by the department of transport has been um running for um a while now and we've now got um a lot of timetable and location data going into that service um, and thoughts are now beginning to turn to uh, what can this timetable and location data be used for how can um, as a country we make best use of that um, and um, following a few conversations with um, the uh, the open data team and Mira um, in particular, um, we came up with the uh, the needs to to start to think about um, what might we want if there was going to be a national prediction engine, something that takes that location data um, and that timetable data and produces. Um, countdown times um, and the sort of things that you would expect um, on a uh, electronic screen or app and, and that sort of thing. Um, so having said that, um, we've got Mira on the call um, and um, Mira, welcome. Do you want to um, say a few words of introduction? Um yeah, so I just wanted to say, first of all, um, thank you to Tim and the Real Time Information Group for all of the work that they've done to support the Bus Open Data Programme. Um, and you, as I think many of you are aware, last year we launched a service, um, the Bus Open Data Service as a full service with um, timetable spares and location data publishing functionality. And for data consumers or app developers, they were able to um, in it, consumer either the industry standardized data or data with GTFS to provide primarily in journey planning apps and solutions. And we've been really pleased with um, the progress we've made as a team and uh, as a service. Um, we've seen the increasing provision of um, journey planning solutions across the country and you know, solutions such as City Mapper, which were previously really just limited to the UK. Uh, I'm sorry to London and now being able to um, launch in most of the, the mayoral combined authorities and urban areas around the country. So, um, 
you, as I say, we're really pleased with the progress we're making. This year, the focus has been very much, as, as many of you will know, on data quality, so launching validators to particularly for timetables data and location data. And I wanted to say as well, thank you to the industry and to the bus operators, particularly for, and um, I, I do realise, I think we all realise within the team that the, the introduction of the validators was very much part of the strategy to improve the quality of, bus, or, of data in the service, um, which was one of the requirements that was stated at the start of the programme. Um, but um, yeah. You, it has created, um, I suppose, a transitional period again for, for the operators at a time when many of you were also trying to publish your first data too. And so, um, you, first of all, we just want to say thank you uh, for all of the work that you've been doing, both to help us um, um, build the service and the validators, but also to make sure that your data was published. Um, for any of you who haven't yet published, particularly your FERS data or your compliant timetable data, uh, you, we really encourage you to try and do that um, by the end of this year um, and certainly by early January. Um, this year we've really, I suppose, um, worked. It, we, we've taken I suppose, a business change approach and really supported the industry to publish data. Um, and we'll want to continue to offer support as well next year, but certainly I think for timetables data, um, I, I mean, we do feel that good progress has been made with timetables data in the sense that many operators have, have already published it. Um, but if you haven't yet published particularly your timetables data, we'd just encourage you to process that. Um, on um, predictions, so the work we've been doing this year to improve the quality of timetable data, we've just literally um, last week launched the, um, so it was released 1.15 for um, the bus open data service. And the, the primary change here is that we've included a validator now for location data. Um, and again, we've been pleased with how that's landed in the sense that um, you, since TFL published their bus live location data we've had about 26,000 vehicles providing data their location data feeds to the bus open data service and that's uh, against the national backdrop of there being about 32,300 um, vehicles I think um, we just need to have a look at the, the latest annual operator statistics um, but so, so we're, we're pleased with the progress we're making with location data we do want to increasingly standardize it and we want to ensure that block ref is included and um, so that we can link journey um timetable data and location data to together and launch a prediction service in bods um and so and, and we know from many of our app developers that They've been pleased with the provision of data in, in, in developer friendly apps um, and formats, so um, particularly the GTFS and GTFS RT. But many of them, are and particularly the bigger app developers, so Google, City Mapper, Move It, are all saying that they need predictions data as part of the service. And we also know from the local authorities as well that. Um, sometimes the, the distributive nature of the prediction services that you offer at local authority level um, can create issues particularly for cross-border journeys and particularly for the for the integrity and um, provenance of data and, and that in turn then impacts upon um, that that then in turn impacts upon the um, passengers who are utilizing those services because if they feel that they can't necessarily trust the predictions data because they, their city map app is telling them something to their di to their um, to their digital signage at the bus stop or that they're traveling on a bus in one county and it crosses into another county and, and then all of a sudden they start to experience an issue receiving the, the predictions data then it starts to um, I suppose make it less easy for passengers to utilize those services and make and make passengers feel um, that they don't necessarily have all the information that they need to make informed decisions about their travel. And um, 
and we we want passengers ultimately to feel that it is as easy to take the bus as it is for them to take a car if not easier um it's you know it's very much part of transport decarbonization um you, and, and for transport decarbonization you think particularly in the urban areas but even in rural areas as well increased utilization of public transport be it either in hybrid modes where you use the car to take the car to park and ride and then take a bus or train or in urban areas where all of your journey is completed on public transport either way you're um there, there is absolutely a need to create to, to encourage more people to utilize public transport to sub, to support our transport decarbonization plans so um that's all i'll say on that matter but i suppose really the reason why i wanted to say a few words and the reason why we're pleased that this workshop has been created is because what we want to do is um as part of pods provide a prediction service we want the local authorities to feel that they're able to switch off their, their distributed systems um for predictions data um and that's very much part of realizing the economies of scale um benefits associated with uh, the, a centralized prediction service but we also appreciate that many of you um when you procure your systems for predictions you also procure other services as part of that and we'd like to understand in more detail what functionality you would need from a centralized prediction service how you would know that a, a good centralized prediction service was working effectively and things like data formats and any, any anything else that you want to share with us but um you it's really important that we do understand this in in detail so that we can then ensure we have a proper specification um, thanks tim that's i think mm. all probably need to say on that yeah no, thank you mira that's a very helpful um uh, introduction and background to um this morning's session thank you um so um to to get us um going um one of the things that it would be really useful to help us understand um is do you actually have a prediction engine at the moment do you have something that calculates when the bus is going to arrive um at a bus stop to and providing that to um whatever services you're using it with and so um we're just going to um it's quite difficult to have a show of hands on a call um so we're going to um have a um a vote um on this so you um you can um vote on these um options so um yes you've got your own prediction engine at the moment um you do and it's shared with somebody else no we don't and no but you've got plans to um get one so um you can um vote on this you have one vote um each um to vote you can click on the purple bobs if you've voted for the wrong one if you press the shift key down and uh, then click it it'll remove your um vote so i'll just give you a couple of minutes to uh, uh vote on those so this just helps us understand a bit of the landscape out there who's got um what because that will help us uh target um where the most benefit might be There's still a few more people to vote. If you're having 
Um, problems, so I will. Okay, if you've not voted, if you can do so. Um, quickly. Tim? Yes, good Michael morning. Montes. I don't seem to be able to get it to do the vote. Could you just talk me through that again, please? Um, so if you um, click on the... Um, box that you want to um, vote for, you should see a little um, symbol appear. No, I can't. No, not for me, it isn't. Right, okay. Um, if you uh, stick it in the chat, then um, that will we'll get that recorded then. Is that down there? Is that down there at the face? Chat, 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 chat. Uh, chat in go to meeting, uh, or once I've ended. So, there's any a few more people, I guess, some of you are suppliers. So, if I end voting, um, Tim, I have the same problem. It say logged, so I was unable to vote. Yeah, and it keeps okay. disconnecting me. So I am okay. here. We are here, but difficult to follow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So it's not working. Um. Brilliantly. So what we can now, um, if you've been unable to vote, if you just put a um a little post-it next to um the the box um that you would have voted for um we can um just uh capture um that and hopefully we'll get a few more so we know that uh there's one there for Essex, um, one no for Lancashire, so, um, more of you um, have got um, prediction engines, either your own or shared, um, than don't. Um, so um, that's useful and helpful to know as we um, go on, because that might shape um, some of the um, conversations we want to have. So thank you for that. Um, so um, as Mira um, said, thinking about what it would, what we would need to have um, in place um, in terms of functionality um, in a um, prediction engine. Um, the sort of functions that you use that you might have at the moment um, or you would want if you don't have a prediction engine. Um, so um, if we can um, use some time to get put some post-it notes into um, onto here about the functionality that you would expect to have. So that might be as something as um, it needs to um, create a countdown time um, or, you know, it needs to have every bus operator on, for example. So um, we spend a um, few minutes um, thinking about the functionality that we would want 
um, in any um, prediction engine, the sort of things, as I say, that you either have now or you would want. Um, if you haven't got one um, or if you're about to buy one, the sort of things that um, will be in there um, for a future system. Okay, it seems like um, we're things have um, quietened down. So if we just um, have a look at some of these, just to make sure that uh, that we understand um, what you meant, um, ability to give accurate ETIs in terms of disruptions, diversions, okay. Um, announce efficiently and timely sudden cancellation of service, avoiding Nine issue of showing countdown, then disappearing from real time display. Um, yeah, and then when it reappears again, that's even more um, annoying as a customer. Um, we've got one here learning algorithms. Um, does who put that on want to explain a bit more about what you mean for that? Oh, yeah, um, that was me, it's Michael. Um, wants us. I uh, just think that um, sometimes services run um, variably for reasons of traffic density and so forth. Um, it'd be good if the algorithms that are within the actual prediction engine are able to take that on board and make sure that it's not still trying to give a prediction based on the static data behind the systems and saying uh, well yeah we set, we knew it was 10 minutes from this point by the static data but we know around the corner it always got stuck for another 10 minutes or five minutes because of roadworks or something like that so based on previous predictions i think i think the, the system we have does do that but not very effectively mm -hmm. okay thank you um then um good clear downs when the bus has left the stop okay cancelled journeys um there's a there's a few here about um cancellations and disruption handling and things like that that feels like um that's um really important um not all affordable to and available to all operators including the very small ones. Um, this one's um, interesting about making sure we've got flexibility in, in operators, um, operations, yeah. Um, weightings of um, parameters that, akin to the sort of thing that Michael was saying so we'll just um, move that there um, I took cancellation dynamic predictions are linked to live road speed data okay yeah um, linked to systems one network single point for uh, disruptions and things. Yeah, that's a, an interesting um, point for the disruptions project um, as well. Um, messaging to displays, okay. Um, so that would be a way of putting messages in in a central system or taking messages from a feed. So if a bus operator had put a message about a journey or something. Yeah, if I could just explain that one, Tim. So in our current system, we've got the ability to display either whole screen or bottom line messages through our user interface. And we can pinpoint that out to either an individual sign, a group of signs or all signs. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Nick. Um, understanding the rules governing the predictions. Yeah, um, 
viewing the history of predictions bucket analysis. Um, yeah, we'll come on to talk about that in a minute a bit more. Um, cross journey predictions, yeah. Um, tracking control for certain stops. Explain that one a little bit more. I'm, I'm just thinking that predictions obviously are governed by the, how you're tracking buses from the VM. And I'm just thinking that certain, if you're making decisions based on, on VM every 30 seconds, then you might need to be able to plug in certain parameterization of bus stops and road approaches to ensure that you don't do an early departure, that kind of thing. So being able to track track buses effectively is, is as important as uh, just calculation of prediction based on times, I think. But... Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Um... Then there's a lot in this one, dynamic predictions on time of day, yeah, um, road closure and diversions, allowing drivers to catch up time on certain road stretches, yeah. Um, yeah, this is an interesting one, taking into account large events, not quite, you know, roadworks and disruptions, but yeah, that's a, that's an interesting one. Um, more messages and notifications, um, live cancellations, yeah. Uh, okay, excellent. Um, excuse me, Tim, just a, a quick one here, it's seeing the LCC, just clarifying this, right? So, when we first the invite was looking at the prediction engine. Okay, so for me, it's like how the predictions are going to be generated on on that on the technical front, because obviously we've got issues at the moment with the, the national data and what's been included. A lot of stuff that's going on here is additions. It's a back office system to manage your displays or manage your information output related to the real time, what's coming out of the real time prediction engines. So are we saying that within this piece of work, there is a, it, this is a full system that's being specified, it's, which is going to take from the BODS data and the AVL, it's going to do the matching and it's going to output this and then each of the LTAs or local operators is going to access into a back office system and they can manage their system through this discussion point we're having here now, is it? Because that's significantly different than what I thought was the first call that was about. Um, yeah, so um, it's interesting what's coming out here. We do have you know, some of the things that, from a pure prediction engine, you might have expected, um, but there are also um, you know, other things cropping in as functionality that, that people would want to see in that. And so as part of this, I guess you could say this is a bit of a discovery. You know what actually do people would what what functionality would people need um, and expect? Um, and so you know there are some things, yeah, Ian, that are coming out in here that um, I hadn't necessarily um, foreseen um, before. Um, so um, so you know this is interesting, and, and you know we'll take this this forward and and talk to the BODS team um, about it, um, and it may or may not end up you know, in any future um, uh, national system, but, but you know, this is, this is really valuable input from, from people that have got things out there at the moment, so I don't know what will happen, um, but uh, it's, in, you know, it's, uh, there are some things in here that I wasn't necessarily expecting, which is really good. Um, got a question um, about occupancy data. Um, it's interesting that it's not 
cropped up on any of the um, post-its that I've seen. Um, is that something that people think would be um, useful? Have, have you got it? Um, are you thinking about including it in prediction engines, for example? No? OK. So um, excuse me, excuse me, Tim. I am unable to to answer to you quickly on mural. Uh, yes, we certainly are very interested in occupancy. It's one of the uh, of the items I was got to highlight. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um. So um. That was the um, functionality. Some of them um, stray into um, the the next thing that I want to look at, which is um, the the quality. So um, when you um, buy a system, you, you know, yes, you want some functionality, but you also want to to have some make sure that it's it's quality um, and it's working properly. Um, what are the sort of metrics and quality expectations that you might have um, for um, a system like this? Do you have some at the moment, for example? Do, do you measure the, you know, the accuracy and quality of um, predictions out there? Do you have nothing um, knowing that is as valuable um, as, as knowing what metrics you, you might use at the moment. So um, if we can um, spend some time thinking about um, quality and metrics, that would be um, useful, please. I will, um, there was one um, that I will move over here actually, because that one um, is very much about quality. Okay, so, Few people still typing, so feel free to, to carry on. Um, we'll just have a look and make sure that we understand um, some of these uh, apologies for my hounds. Um, so, ratio of inaccurate outputs to accurate outputs. Um, okay. Um, have you got a, a way of measuring? that at the moment, whoever put that in, that would be interesting. Okay, um, need to have all operators contributing. Yeah, absolutely. Tool for passenger feedback and reporting faults. Okay, yeah. Feedback mechanism to validate rate the accuracy of prediction. Customers could be prompted in their integrated apps to give the feedback. Yeah, okay. Um, I'll just, uh, those are quite similar. Um, view history of predictions, bucket analysis. Um, yeah, view history of predictions. When when you say view the history of predictions, quite what do you mean by that? Uh, Michael, that was another uh, one. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry. Um, well, we often have a situation where we'll get a, you know, a comment from a customer saying it never showed that information, you know, or we have a third party person saying uh, that display, you know, our display was showing what it was sent. So it would be useful to be able to more easily fish out sort of like a runner, a, um, a mechanism so you could run the history again, a bit like some systems allow you to run the history of bus movement, if that could include the history of predictions. So we can say at this point, this is the information that we'd sent out regarding this stop. Just, do you see what I mean? So you've got a, you've got a, a tool there to support or counter claims against the system not working properly. 
Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, Tim, can I just ask? Um, so I have um, a few questions. Just um, I, I want to say as well, thanks. Um, this I, I really found this genuinely very interesting to think about how um, we specify our service and. Um, I did want to understand whether operators um, and authorities were thinking about other modes and the link between this data and, for example, I suppose rail data in particular, given the focus on brush rail integration um, and the need to, to, to link those two modes of transport together. Um, so that's the, the first um, thing that I wanted to say. Um, and then the, the, I also wanted to understand, I can see that Siri has been mentioned um, quite a bit in terms of data standards, but the, you, whether you were considering also, um, would GTFS be useful? Um, and yeah, whether you, whether there would be, an, I, I'd imagine that we probably would provide the data as GTFS, but um, you'd be interested to get a local authority view on that. Yeah, that's next up the full mats one, Mira. Um, but the right. rail one is is an interesting one. Um, do, do people systems um, cope with bus and rail or um, light rail and bus at the same time, or are they separate systems? anybody wants to come in on that yeah i'll come in on that tim so on our system at the moment where we've got tft displays we alternate between a display of bus data and the world line data for relevant stations so it's not obviously taking the rail data in dynamically but just displaying it within an iframe um that did work until world line changed their outputs and our our tpi providers having to catch up with their display software but that's how we've done it in cornwall yeah so you're merging that effectively merging that data after this in in the display it's not even merging it it's literally showing the world line data as a web page on a separate page of the display right there's okay. no yeah. no no back end process happening with physically just consuming the data to download the world line data every minute. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about people like, um, I know TFGM were planning to attend or South Yorkshire where you've got light rail and um bus in the vicinity of each other are you combining the data at all um in south yorkshire we try we have tried to do that um where we pick up stuff from the rail darwin system and combine it with with the bus data uh usually on a we don't sort of it's that split screen. It's not sort of like in, inter, interwoven between the two. But um, of course, we have the tram train in South Yorkshire as well. So we're already looking at ways of tying that information in together, together with other um, data, so that we get a comprehensive offer to the customer. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's useful. Um, so um, quality stuff, accuracy and nap time movements feeding into the system. Um, is this about when a bus stop moves, the impact? Um, Yeah, it is, Tim. Yeah, we've uh, noticed in previous editions where we've uh, had to move the stops or the coordinates weren't correct, it does have an impact, particularly on clear downs and stuff like that. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, 
Okay. Um, identifying stops with ball predictions, matching and change parameters. Okay. Um, inform the real time journey times. Is the timetable accurate? How much does that? Uh, that's this is an interesting one. There's there's a there's some interesting things to pick out um, from from that. So is this? Um, who put this in? Gary, is this? feeding back the loop to that timetable is is impossible to achieve um and so therefore you need to to rejig the timetable based on yeah absolutely tim that's one aspect of it yeah um obviously you know you you may already know we're already doing this anyway as part of a uh, project um we did with odi leads and subsequently with national express and tappy um, we're now um, asking um, ITO to do this as part of our transforming real-time information project. Um, so we believe it's 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 a key component of ensuring that um, one that services uh, ha have an accurate timetable, and two that we can provide feedback to passengers um, on any potential disruption that might happen on certain days or times of the week. Uh, but also, we do feel that this information will be useful for future. Uh, analysis and to inform both the TFT and the Traffic Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's an interesting overlap there with um, uh, the analyze stuff though from data service as well. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, we'll make sure that uh, that that project gets sight of some of this. So that, that's good. Okay, journey records, backtrack data, sections of route. what so what backtrack data how does that work uh, nick uh, yeah so it's uh, nick at cornwall so this again is a functionality that um our rtp i provider provides so obviously in cornwall um mobile phone signal can be a bit of an issue at times um, so we lose data transmission from the buses. Um, so what our RTPI provider does sometimes is try to be clever and backfill in a missed section of route. Um, but unfortunately, sometimes they're over clever and the bus might have actually universally or been diverted, but it will backfill in the data for a section of route that's been missed for whatever reason. So when you come back to historically look at a journey, you've got data in there which is unrealistic because it's tried to sort of fill it in in unrealistic times or um the bus simply didn't go to those stops right okay yeah so yeah, yeah. it's about the ai being appropriate to the data it's receiving yeah yeah okay thank you um controlling for prediction counts down to a arrival so is this yeah. i think i think yeah i, I guess the, the the idea of the prediction engine is to eventually spit, spit out some form of sm um i guess the sm provides you know the scheduled arrival and departure and the predicted arrival and departure i suppose for a third party to be able to show it's three minutes or two minutes I guess they they already know uh, about whether that should count down to arrival or departure, or that they've got enough information to be able to produce a, an accurate kind of time to arrive. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, it's probably not relevant to the engine actually. Mm -hmm. but, um, I think the next one, the gaps in VM and how solid the VM behind a prediction is. Yeah, that's kind of well, you might always think. Yeah. Updates and things, yeah. Okay, excellent. There's some really good stuff there. Um, thank you. Um, so um, now want to um, think about the format. Mira um, raised this a minute or two ago. Um, so what formats would you expect a system to be able to produce as an output? Um, 
what um, um, of the of the standards, or, or are there some other formats that people are aware of? Um, I was going to uh, try d do another vote on this, but given we were having a few problems, if you just um, stick a um, a um, a, p a post it next to the one that you that you think it should be, and we can use that as a as a proxy for um, voting. So Siri SM is stop monitoring. Um, that looks at the world from um, a stop perspective. Siri ET is estimated timetable. Um, and um, handles things like disruptions and changes to to um, to routes and things. GTFSRT, that's the real time version of GTFS, um, which is for timetables and things like that. Um, there might be other formats. So yeah, somebody suggesting um, Siri. Um, SX, um, which is all about disruptions and things. Okay, so we've got a range of um, quite a number for um, Siri SM, um, some for ET. Um, so GTFS RT uh, appears. Um, interesting, um, there's a few that are suggesting Siri VM. Um, so it'd be interesting to understand from those of you that have put that down what more you might expect um, from a Siri VM feed for this than we're getting from um, just the, the plain um, open data service location data, which is in Siri VM. Is there things missing? In that data that we should be making sure are provided. Hi, Tim. It was me, uh, one of those people that put series uh, uh, CDBM. Uh, I wasn't thinking of anything specifically, just to reassure that it's compatible with the with the yeah. VM with the. So just that, just compatibility. Okay. Okay. That's that's uh, really useful um, feedback um, on um, the formats. Um, so one of the um, things that's help, always helpful um, when you're looking at um, how things need to be specified and things like that. Um, is actually needing to know what you're going to use this data for. So um, what do you use your current real-time system outputs for? What would you use a national system for? So for example, that might be things like feeding a display on street or feeding an app. Um, what are you what would you use the data um from a, uh, a national prediction engine for um, what are the sort of outputs that you would um, be using it for. So if we can just um, spend a few minutes thinking about that. Okay, and we get the bing bong. So um, let's just have a look at some of these. So departure boards in apps, yeah, websites, kiosks. Alexa, that's an interesting one. Um, how would you envisage it being used in Alexa? Yeah. So um, you can ask Alexa when the um, bus is going to depart from your nearest bus stop. Um, and you can do it with, uh, with some of the others as well. Um, but that's an interesting one. Um, so uh, API dis 
displays, uh, curated departure boards. Yeah, okay. Third party systems, including UTMC. Um, how how are you using the the data at the moment, or would you use it in UTMC from um, this UTMC being urban traffic management control um, system for those that uh, haven't come across the acronym before? Okay. Um, feed on street bus stations and displays, yeah. Um, displays in house mapping system, another traffic control system and apps. Um, yeah, online information for operators without their own system. Yeah, okay. Um, bus stops, bus stations, departure boards in hospitals and town centres. That's a that's an interesting one. Um, and website mapping systems. So is that so you can show where the bus is on a map or um, and see it moving around? Yeah. Tricia. I think that was yours. Can you elaborate on the website mapping systems? Oh, and Tim. So, so, sorry about that. Yeah, we're um, we're developing our website so that um, we so that people can see the route information. Click on um, the bus stops on a map for the county and then click on the bus stop and it um, shows the prediction there so we're yep. going to do it for all operators within the website okay excellent thank you um mira was that you coming in hi uh, yes yeah it was tim i was just um wanting to know do, do any of the local authorities for example provide um data so apis or data services to app developers in the area it, how do you work with your app developers who um might be providing journey time journey planning solutions and also are any of you considering letting contracts for for example mobility as a service type solutions and apps and um is that a consideration in the specification of a prediction service Anybody want to? I know that likes of Manchester have provided uh, open data with with APIs to app developers in the past. Um, Is that the FGM? That... Did you say Tim? Yeah, Manchester. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, Gary, I'm sure. You doing that in the West Midlands? Um, yeah, we are. Yeah, we've been doing that for a few years. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, and um, City Mapper are one of our key users of our API at the moment. <clears throat> how how do you work with City Mapper in terms of how how do they ingest your data? Do they go uh, to an open data source, or do you have a? Is it closed, and do they come to you? Well, at the moment, well, I mean, it, essentially, Mira, it's I guess it's open data now because it, it is through Eto. Yeah. Um, so, uh, who are obviously now consuming all the bus open data anyway, uh, and that's what we're pushing mm -hmm. into our own uh, separate Eto system, and then out through our API. Um, the API is, uh, is is based on I think the old TFL API model, um, which we, we mm -hmm. which we took on so um but obviously we'll develop that as needs be anyway can i can i ask then um the, so the data that you share with city mapper do you show any data with them over and above what's provided um or beyond sorry beyond what's provided in the um in the in the bus open data server so obviously bus open data you provide time to bus first location mm -hmm. um yeah, I mean, 
is there any data that you share with City Mapper, for example, in closed formats that you wouldn't necessarily publish as open data? Uh, not at the moment, no. No, no. So um, uh, we, we talked a bit earlier about light rail. So so our metro, the West Midlands metro service is also provided through that API as well. So we're providing more than one method of transport. Um, and then as we bring in more methods of transport, so whether that's cycle hire or parking or other things, then, mm -hmm. then we would look to uh, provide all of that in a single API where we can. So that, that API as it stands at the moment is now, it's, uh, I mean, it's fairly old model, I would say, although it obviously works really well, um, but we would look to develop it in the further. And uh, really that's a contract we've got with Ito um, is, is, is one of continual development anyway, so. Yeah, okay, thank you. All right. Mm. Yeah, and, um... TFL, um, of course, um, do a lot with uh, with open data and um, have a large number of uh, of users. David, how many different people use the open data APIs at the moment? Do we know? Sure. Um, it's in the thousands. Uh, I'm not sure exactly if it's, it's held by a different area, but anyone can sub subscribe and we just bump up the servers if we need more resources. Hmm. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Okay, um, then um, more traffic signal control. We're not taken direct from ETM. Okay, that's interesting. And uh, smart speakers, so another Alexa type um, arrangement. Okay, so that's what you use the data for. Um, I guess the big question um, really is. Um, would you, if you've got your own system at the moment, um, or you're about to buy one, would you actually use National Prediction Engine? Would you actually switch off your um, own system um, and use a national one um, instead? Um, so um, if we can um, uh, do what we did, um, when we looked at data formats um, and use uh, post-it notes yet next to it to uh, have a uh, have a pseudo vote, that would be um, uh, very helpful to understand because it's all very well um, developing something, but if people are not going to be um, using it, um, yeah, will it be provided free? Um, if we assume that um, it will be at no cost to uh, local authorities, is we're not giving you just a yes or no um, option, um, actually is probably better because um, knowing that the jury's out and um, uh, case by case and things like that actually is, uh, is very valuable to, to know and understand um so yeah okay okay so there's a real mix of uh yes no's and um somewhere in the middle sitting on the fence of the jury's out at the moment um so okay that's actually more useful to understand than just a yes or no so excellent Okay, so um, if um, there was a national prediction engine and you were going to use it, um, what are what support would you um, want or need to start to be able to use that? Um, and what sort of time scale? So, you know, if you've got your own um, system and you were going to um, move to the national one, what sort of time scales do you think that might be um, over? Um, what support would you need? You know, technical or um, um, you know, um, documentation, business change, um, support, 
would you need to um, help you use a national system? So it might be interesting to think about um, here um, some of the experiences that you might have had supporting um, operators um, adopt um, timetable and location data for um, for BODs. You know, there might be some similarities in, in the support and things like that that you um, think you might need. Um, it's always good to learn from experience. So um, if you're going to be, uh, if you were going to use um, real time national prediction system, what support um, would you need? Um, technical or otherwise, and what sort of timescales would it be before you were able to um, stop using an existing system that you might have? So, Tim, um, somebody's put continued support for collaboration, um, which is great, um, as a joint effort, how will national engine compare to current localised engines? In terms of the collaboration, are we thinking about um, collaboration um, between local authorities, between local authorities and central government or with app developers. Um, you'd be good to understand that in a little bit more detail. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that uh, came from um, Nathaniel, who has uh, left us to go and have his uh, dinner, um, according to the messaging, um, because he's in uh, Singapore. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's evening for him. So I don't think we'll get anything um, more from him here, unfortunately. But uh, it's an interesting one um, to to try and explore wider. So I don't know whether anybody wants to um, chip in um, on that. You know. Okay, so um, what have we got? Support for um, small operators. Um, what what? What sort of support um, do, do we think is needed for small operators? Hi, Tim, that is me again. Uh, yes, we have across the country, we have many, many small operators that are really struggling to comply with AVL. So, uh, yes, we we need them to to be advised the ways to go, the options they have to to achieve to achieve the the, the prediction system. Okay. As we rely we rely on them, and um, yes, it's a it's a big big issue in our county. The small operators. Yeah. So that so that's a that's a range of just business change and tech and technical if they haven't got anything what their options are yes technical yeah mm -hmm. yeah thank okay you. thank you um transitional business case will depend potentially on integration reprogramming costs yeah keeping small operators on board okay Ability to maintain local data manipulation linked to disruption messaging. Yeah, okay. Picked up on that um, in functionality as well. Um, yeah, removes cross border issues. Yeah. Um, criteria to determine if an operator ET feed or national prediction engine feed should be used. So, what are you? thinking about there in terms of criteria and making a decision um, on that? Is that quality or technical or? Yeah, it's, it comes back, I think we touched on earlier about an operator may want to see 
their ET feed as being the better quality data. Um, but there has to be some guidance around at what point does a, an operator's ET feed be considered to be better than a national prediction engine feed. Otherwise, we sort of start to deviate again away from single source of predictions. Yeah. Okay. So that that comes down to quality and I guess te technical reliability and things like that. Yeah. In theory, if the operators got their AVL set up correctly and got all their um, schedule data correct there should be no difference in the ET feed from the operator system or a national prediction engine hmm. Hmm. yeah okay um, no system starting with a blank sheet so clear simple training um, needs to be a simple base system with more complex add-ons kept separate okay that's that's an interesting um, approach yeah um integration cost ability for local regional manipulation control yeah devolution versus centralization debate and yeah okay so five years because you've just bought a system um and um contract due to end next year proposing extending annually with this in mind okay that's good um future procurements like to be based on this model yeah okay excellent um so that's um support and um time scales okay um so um the um Next um, thing will be, um, is there anything that people think we should be considering um, for national system that we've not talked about? Is there any other aspects that you think we ought to be considering, including that we've not talked about um, yet? No. Okay. Um, Tim, I yeah. think this. Oh, go on. Whoever that was. No, you go first. You, I think you were there before me. Oh, okay. Um, I, I'm just. So with the bonds piece, LTAs are not really involved, but there's no requirement for LTAs to be involved, and in fact, all the onus is on operators to do what they need to do. And that, to some extent, is fine. Um, although arguably a little odd. Um, but I think that within the context of roadside displays, potentially doing stuff with traffic signals, etc., there is a far bigger highways requirement and local transport authority requirement with this. So why i say you know jury's out sitting on the fence um if it was a bods model actually you know the operators have to do all of this and the ltas but you know well we've not really considered them and that's all just too difficult isn't it um because you've got some ltas who are very well resourced and others who really aren't i guess a bit like operators let's be honest um then you know I, I don't know how we would continue to do the things that we want to do to improve the quality of the bus offer in our area if we you know if we went to that national system I think there'd be have to be a lot more flesh on the boat. Mm -hmm. Hope that's helpful. Yeah, no, that is that is very helpful. Thank you, Andrew. Nick, you were. Yeah, so what I was going to come in with was essentially we rely on a lot of reporting from our existing system, which that reporting data only exists because we've got a prediction engine. 
and this is probably something which falls between this project and the ABODs project, is that yeah you know, we're unlikely to have the reporting if we switch off a prediction engine, so we need that reporting replicated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, Sorry, can uh... I just ask in terms of the um, the reporting requirement? What sort of what 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 would you need to be included in those reports? Um, so it's yeah, some of the stuff that's starting to emerge, like the corridor data, um, which obviously we can now get in ABODs, but uh, still a little bit clunky. Um, mm and relies on some very specific data inputs. So I've got an example at the moment where I've got one operator who hasn't tracked to one of the stops on a corridor. So just because that one stop is missed in mm. that operator's data, it doesn't appear in the corridor analysis. Right. Um, and that's a ticket I've raised, raised with Ito or will be raising with Ito um, because I'm not seeing a complete picture of the end to end because the operator at the time period I'm looking at hadn't tracked to a stop which was fairly new at the time. Mm. Um, so, it's, you know, whereas in the existing system, I could still pull that end-to-end -end journey time out without any difficulty. Um, we also use, obviously, we've got lots of journey matching reports, punctuality reports, um, which are just not, as readily available to us to use in ABODs at the moment as they are in our RTI system. So journey matching and punctuality. So I've got corridor data, journey matching, punctuality. So if we were able to provide that sort of data in reports that could be exported from the analyzed bus data service, would that help fulfill the requirement? Yeah, it would for us, um, but I think there's a whole discovery piece around reporting separate to prediction engines. Mm. Okay. Yeah. One one of the things that we've talked about in in a bods um, sessions quite a bit is um, people requesting access to the raw data so that they can put it into their own systems and um, do things and, and merge data with you know other data sets that they've got and things like that and so david's put something in the in the chat about is it reporting all the data you know so mm -hmm. you can get it out and do your own analysis so that's something that we've talked about in abods um mm -hmm. sessions a bit and that might help overcome some of that um because everybody mm -hmm. i suspect will have their own particular take on what report they would want something like that mm -hmm. can i ask um are you um are you considering for example other types of analysis so um i know you we were talking to base map and they were looking at the integration of first data into their local authority software um to to complete first analysis and then we were thinking about emission emissions analysis as well for journeys um and yeah i was just interested is that is that something that you're considering anybody thinking about adding FAIRS data into reporting? That's an in, well, FAIRS data, I think, is a good one. The emissions one is a good piece. I suppose it depends on the availability of, is there a way to tap into the DVLA vehicle database to pull the Euro standard of a vehicle to match that data to the vehicle ID, which has come through the Siri data to get a carbon figure for a journey that's operated? Probably thrown a big question out there. <laughs> yeah. But we have an awful lot of data about the vehicle, the journey, the distance, the journey, and everything at the moment. The missing piece is actually the carbon emissions for that vehicle.
Yeah. I mean, in, in theory, that ought to be quite possible for um, public transport because the the new some of the new um, data elements in in Siri uh, two point one um, include um, fuel type and and vehicle more more about vehicle um, capabilities and things like that. So once you've got that what the emissions are um, for a vehicle that becomes more possible unless you're wanting to go actually what is actually coming out of the tailpipe um, which is significantly more difficult mm. okay so um in terms of um, actions that have come out um, of um, this, um, there's um, some link to the uh, ABODS um, um, project that, that we've talked about and also um, the NAPTAM project. There's a couple of, uh, of, of crossovers there. Um, and in terms of what next from this, um, we'll review this um, session and um, Artig will produce a short paper for the DFT BODS team um, on the output of this session um, to help um, them think about um, requirements and what will be needed for national prediction engine um, and we'll um, present that to um, them early in the new year um, and um, what we'll do is um, we will leave this mural board open to the end of the week so if you think about something um over the next couple of days you can come on and um you can add a post-it note and a message um on so that um uh, we can uh, we can make sure that that's included um or you can um drop me um an email send me a message through um, um eventbrite if you've not got um my um email address but I suspect most of you um, do um, and um, just to um, finish off um, I'd like to um, get some um, feedback on how you think this session has um, gone um, what you thought was good and useful about it and what was perhaps not so good um and uh you know the uh the what's missing and, and what what should be happening that's not happening um so we'll uh we'll leave this um up as i say um please feel free to provide um feedback um it's really useful um trying to do these sort of things remotely is a bit different to work uh, to being in the same room and um using um things that we might perhaps more familiar with um so feedback is very useful um so that's the end of the session um so thank you all for your time this morning um thank you for your input um thank you mira for the um uh, background and introduction um, bits um, and thank you for um, participating um, and um, the good debate and discussion that we've had um, so thank you all and uh, have a good rest of the day thank you for watching this Artig webinar to find out more about Artig and our work 
then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you. Thank you.